Today we'll be creating navigation menu and in particular navigation in casual games. Because if you use the same principles in other games or in applications, you will deliver a great user experience. If all that you are interested in is the hands-on design, so just go to this timecode. But if you want to understand the reasons why behind my decision-making process, just watch the whole video and you'll know everything that I know. So let's begin. In casual games, your primary goal as the player is to reach the action as fast as possible. Skip everything and just get in the action and enjoy some nice quality time. But you have to navigate there first. And to help your players navigate properly, you have to minimize their cognitive overload, simplify everything, have a clear hierarchy and preferably nice and bright colors. Okay, so before we dive to action and start designing, there are a few things we need to make sure we have sorted out and understood. As you can see, I have put this character of mine on the screen because once you have something on the screen you kind of intuitively make a story and let's think of a story for this character there once was a crazy scientist who wanted to create this but these new race creatures, of creatures they wanted by freedom for themselves the and so began thousands of years world, have the penguins eventually these creatures became civilized human origins advanced. in order for them to raise above the water so it's like, so the whole theme of this game is somewhere in the future. The game should also represent it somehow in the design. Okay. Number one, the goal. This one is super important because this is the foundation for every decision we're going to make when we design. What is the purpose of it? What the navigation should do for the player? Is it simply switching between screens or does it take the player to the action? And the goal of this navigation that we're doing is to show the player all the areas of the game. Okay, so basically it's like swipe off the screen. So just a simple navigation bar. Number two, the layout. Where the navigation bar will be positioned on the screen. And of course, how many buttons should be there on this navigation. This derives from the goals that your player needs to accomplish. So don't hide important stuff somewhere in the side menus. If it's important for your player, show it. Let's speak about where the navigation bar should be positioned. Usually when you get a reference for the navigation, bar you will see that everything most of the time will be positioned on the bottom part of the screen this is an accessibility principle it's called Fitz law it's named after psychologist paul Fitz, who in 1954 published his theory on human mechanics and aimed movement in summary the time it takes a person to reach a target is the function of the size of the target and the distance to the target so basically the bigger and closer the faster it is to reach there and it's a great accessibility principle when you think about your devices and the way you hold them vertically so this is where you need to design for in terms of the menu of the game and actually the mechanics of the game as well if all the interaction is going to be from here it's going to be much more easier for you as a player to interact with the game so let's just create a rectangle for now it's going to be nothing but a frame for the navigation okay let's have it darker color now we need to understand how many buttons do we want to show on this navigation bar of course we cannot show more than a few most important stuff of this game but it really derives from the goals that our player needs to accomplish let's keep it simple for this tutorial and use just three buttons just duplicate this background thing that we did and change its color so that we see the difference and now just make three of them and it's also gonna be nice if we could align it so like this it's time for us to move to the third principle visual language a set of visual rules that help your player understand what they're looking at and there are a few things that fall under this title so for example theme of your game what do the buttons look like in terms of shape do we write text on the buttons or is it just icons and what style are the icons and now a very important tip never start designing without sketching first unless of course as i said you're a grand ui master and you can just imagine stuff and it will pop on the screen but none of us is like that trust me sketch it on paper sketch it digitally it doesn't matter put your thoughts 
into a physical representation and the last thing in this list the hierarchy so what is the order of importance because navigation reveals content we need to make sure our players understand our intent from a glance and remember every second in a game session counts if we don't guide the players properly they will find the game that does it better and this is not so good for us and our game right keeping that in mind let's dive to action they sketched for about two hours and i came up with this concept of a design it's only brush strokes so i cannot really do anything with it once you have this sketch ready it's just a question of time and your proficiency with the shape tool let's jump into the design and start creating these elements and let's start by creating this base shape so select the pen tool and just start placing vertices hold shift to make a completely straight line and now shift again shift again and shift and click again even though it wasn't necessary ctrl j to duplicate the layer ctrl t to transform flip horizontal and drag it to the side uh, select both layers with ctrl ctrl e to merge them and now you have two shapes merged to one shape great now ctrl a to select all the canvas and now you see you have this line with the elements centered just click it so that you really center your element completely to the screen we have also this curvature going on so let's just do right that select your shape with the black arrow and now shift to select the other one simultaneously select this ellipse tool hold shift and you will see this little plus sign to the crosshair and it means that whatever shape you are creating now is going to be part of this same shape and of this same layer so if i just click and release the shift so that we don't keep a proportional scaling and now with the space bar i can move it across the screen i will align it somewhat accurate to the points and release now let's adjust these corners a little bit so it looks fine from all directions looks pretty nice no one is gonna check if it's really touching the points so it's good enough and by the way if you want to see my sketching process let me know in the comment section below what i think we can do now is actually treat these corners a little bit they are too harsh at the moment alt and control and you will see that your arrow is becoming this kind of triangular shape once you touch a point and drag it you will create this smooth transition instead of a sharp edge and as you do that you will expand this point and you will create these curvature lines which will make your shape smooth looks good we need the same here so just erase this element and hold i'll click this one and shift for drag it on the same axis ctrl t flip horizontal align it again so it aligns well with our uh, ellipse tool looks good let's change the color of so that it's not black to this dark purple and we will take care of all the gradients and all the colors and nuances farther as we progress we also have this glowing yellow light elements and let's create them with the same pen tool just trace them with the pen tool at this moment we can yeah why not let's just select uh, the same color and we will not transfer everything right now to the other side because we actually gonna make all the left side first and then just copy and paste it to the right side now let's design our active buttons so first a rectangle with radius to the corners it should be this glowing off-white bluish gray color and let's see if we can design it in a smart way and by that i mean we will design it as a smart object and then we will use the transform manipulation to change its angles and keep all the control over the shape of this rectangle so that we can always come back and adjust its radiuses or whatever put it somewhere on the side so that we see our reference now double click to enter the layer style and let's evaluate what we have on the screen so first we have this glossy element and let's create it let's adjust its color parameter so first make it white and now on the opacity side of the colors let's adjust it so that it has this sharp edge 
first and let's move our effect let's take the same opacity stop with zero opacity and click on the side of this bar again so that we create here the zero opacity as well for the gradient of this shine but as you can see it doesn't curve and it looks awkward even if i rotate it like this it still doesn't look the same it's straight and for this we're gonna change this style to radial it's really small yes so first let's reverse it starting to get somewhere adjust this angle and as you can see this circle disappears from this shape completely now adjust it again there is this point where it just kind of collapses back on itself so just find the highest point that it's still not now uh, let's adjust our colors a little bit more and make it a little bit tighter and here in the opacity that we did on the left side let's bring back some of it so that we really get this white color as well hit ok adjust it just a tiny bit more and i think with this we are pretty much done so this little gradient that we see here on the bottom part of this panel it has a little pinkish tint to it so let's try to find this little pinkish tint and i think this here looks similar i know it's not pink but in comparison to colors as they see together because it has a little bit more purple in it therefore it looks a little bit pinkish it looks good enough now let's go back to this highlight and adjust its opacity a tiny bit now what we need to do is we need to create a drop shadow for this element and our drop shadow needs to be hard 100 percent opacity size 1 and distance 10 for me now we need to add another drop shadow but this time it's going to be very far away and also very spread and also with very little opacity to it so we just kind of see its reflection underneath hit ok and ctrl j to duplicate get rid of all the effects by dragging these effects to the garbage now hit a to get into the path selection tool properties get rid of the fill color and instead hit this stroke color and increase its size to let's say 10 let's see how it looks like okay it looks good now a little bit more space to it because eventually we want to get as close to our reference as possible and also we try to do it in a smarter way so that we won't have to work so much in all the curves and the shapes and that we really can adjust very quickly and now to the moment of truth let's see if we manage to do this with shift select both layers and right click with the mouse convert to smart object now we have this completely editable smart object and let's hit ctrl t right click warp and in this custom panel select arch move this notch here so that it looks like our reference now ctrl t again ctrl alt shift and drag this point to the left simultaneously adjusting the right and this lower part to the right simultaneously adjusting the left we will bring the scale of it so that it sits together properly hit enter to approve let's see what we have pretty decent still editable layer of our active button we still can go and adjust all the radiuses because we didn't touch this shape at all so as it seems this drop shadow doesn't look so good so let's get rid of it and create a shadow for this element so ctrl j to duplicate drag it underneath take it a little bit lower ctrl s to save to see how it looks like let's call it shadow so that we are not confused transform it down in the parameters adjust its corners ctrl t command shift alt to give it this interesting angle and now adjust it so that it sits well with your base element ctrl s to save so let's call it central active button and let's see if we can duplicate the same approach to the side button as you can see they're affected by perspective and they're kind of leaning forward so let's try to accomplish the same thing with this smart object so right click with the mouse new smart object via copy let's put it to the side and adjust its parameters by holding ctrl and shift and 
dragging it to the side. And now we need to take care of the shadow and of this stroke that's floating above and of course this edge here so let's go inside of this smart object and adjust it accordingly the easiest first this neon part looking good right now the edge element doesn't bother me so much we can just take these two lines and adjust them a little bit the other part should be a little bit slimmer because it's for shortening now in terms of the shadow seems we need to have the canvas to the side and we need to adjust the drop shadow angle let's see what it does of course it will affect our shape again but don't worry just a little fix all we need to do is just drag it to the side a bit it seems we can have this point a little bit lower like this cool so, so let's call this left active button right click new smart object via copy move it to the other side Control t and flip horizontal and the reason i did new smart object and not just a duplicate of this one is because we're gonna address this shine here and put it to the other side let's enter the parameters of the layer style gradient overlay and adjust it to the other side it looks great uh, let's change its name to right active button and put it all inside the group and call this group active buttons now let's focus on creating this base element and for this, let's get rid for a moment from this active button. So first, let's drop the opacity so that we see the sketch underneath. And as we said, let's do only one half and then just duplicate it to the other side. So basically, we're going to draw a shape. It's going to cover this area and, of course, clip it to our base shape. Now let's give it some brighter color. We can try and move it and see what we can get from this shape looks okay to me let's duplicate this one and clip mask again we're gonna do the same but for the other side of this element of course this one is gonna be brighter because it like hits the light and this one so let's make it darker like a shadow we have this brighter shade of this purple and even the purple itself is not exactly the purple that was on the base element so we we have this brighter shade here let's just do this like this we have this crazy highlight that almost makes it look like glass and maybe we should take these two parts and mirror them okay let's see and see how our buttons align to it look okay so we have this highlight and this one we're gonna do with shape so pen tool again few clicks on the canvas to create the shape align it so that it sits well with the reference image of course let's give it this bright aqua color put it on top of everything let's try to add some color to this base shape and then let's try to apply this glossy effect something like this and now it looks better what I'm not sure about is this shadowed areas. Maybe they should be really light or something like this. And of course, we shouldn't forget this bright yellow element. Let's duplicate it to the other side as well. Let's merge them together with Ctrl E. And of course, also clip it to the same base. And let's also maybe put it in a group. What it seems we are missing is this beveled edge around this glowing part. So let's do it. So all we're gonna do is just create another shape element let's drop down its opacity as well it really looks like it could also work like this this shape here i think we can have some little feather to it to soften the transition between the edges and also this element here as well could receive some feather treatment here on this little edge i want to give some highlight nothing special and nothing big but just a little highlight and also give it some feather Put it on top of everything of course brighter shadow and maybe even some mask other corner can receive the same effect let's see how it looks like it could be this aqua aqua tint now regarding this shadowed area maybe it could be darker and also let's see if feather would help these transitions and it looks like it does of course we can also add 
some more information here yeah i just erased this right glowing element and now let's take everything that we have on the left side and put it on right side as well we're missing these cutouts for the buttons areas and let's make them right now let's make thin rectangle and let's have another one that's gonna be its shadow and now we change its color to this darker purple now let's take them together, align them accordingly to our perspective. And again, the same thing, but this time the opposite direction. So Ctrl T and flip horizontally. So far so good. We have these inactive buttons. Let's also make this one real quick and very easily create a rectangle, drag its corners to the sides. Now let's bring it higher, change its color to bright purple and let's duplicate it and bring it underneath it and let's give it this darker shadow color also make it smaller properties let's increase its feather so that it looks like it's floating above duplicate this rectangle flip it vertically align it together now by selecting these upper points we can just shrink it and make this beveled edge real quick merge these two rectangles so that they become one shape with new layer and clipping mask let's just create a hand painted highlight copy it to the other side and make it a little bit darker so that it stands out this rectangle on itself can get a few gradient passes make this bottom part stand out a little bit more as well and now it looks like a real floating panel with some nice edges group and we're gonna do the same trick that we did for our active buttons. Alt Shift Duplicate, Ctrl T to move and align. Let's put this inactive button underneath this highlight for the purpose of this video. Let's have it all combined to smart object and let's put it here underneath this highlight layer of ours. Now let's cancel this central button because we're gonna present it with the central active button and it looks like our designed inactive button can get some more tilt to it and let's do it Control and shift just take this one and align it save pretty similar effect to what we have in our sketch i think we can also shrink it a bit as is in the smart object like so we have this glowing effect from these light sources select these two shapes let's combine them go into their layer properties outer glow opacity let's have it like so blending mode normal and dark reddish color let's maybe give it more orange looking good we have this neon and let's design them as well pen tool just go over the shapes without closing it just go to fill and disable the color and go to stroke and select white select how many pixels you want it so let's go with 12 okay let's try to duplicate the same effect copy it now let's give it white outer glow so that it looks as if it's glowing let's duplicate to the other side so now this inactive button actually kind of pisses me off because corners here are too harsh so I will just add a mask to it and have a few brush strokes on these corners to fade them into our base element let's see that we don't miss anything oh yeah we do we miss this neon outline of this shape and for this let's just use a simple layer so control and click on the shape area in the layers let's create a new layer by selecting the marquee tool just nudge it a little bit upwards with arrow keys now go back to your base shape layer hold ctrl alt and you will see this icon appears near your hand icon just click on this shape again and you will see that it cut out everything from the previous selection which was the big box and left only pixels that you notched up give it some white color and align it with everything and make it a clipping mask as well let's create these inactive icons so cards main and store and let's begin with the cards because it's really really simple create a rectangle with rounded corners let's make it purplish tint ctrl j to duplicate and ctrl t 
for transformation okay something like this now we need to create this cutout of this first card what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the first card again set it behind the first layer and scale it up a bit and change its color so that we see the difference we need to adjust it so that it looks proportional to our corners we're gonna merge these two layers first one is gonna be this outline and the bottom card let's merge them by selecting this outline just go here to path operations click and hold and subtract from shape now we created this amazing editable cutout for this bottom card let's change its color right click convert a smart object make some adjustments to this icon so that it sits in perspective with our buttons we may even create some nice shadow that's gonna glow underneath these cards and of course brighter shades let's create another drop shadow and this time it's gonna be stronger and this is how we're gonna create this fake reflective surface a little more size to it now we need some kind of differentiation so let's also create another drop shadow and this time it's gonna be closer to the shape and it's gonna be darker because this is how we create this fake distance and maybe a little inner shadow as well so that it looks that it has some kind of volume like this makes it pop even more it looks a little bit like a 3d representation even now for the store icon and i know that in the sketch we had this jam and some coin pile but to be honest i think it won't look so well in terms of the design language so i think better would be just create some kind of simple shape but in the same size and same language so let's create this one duplicate it scale up this bottom layer change its color now let's copy them again now move it create another one and move it this way like so scale it down a little bit cool looking fine to me but i would really really like to have this dollar sign as a cutout so just create a dollar sign control and click on it and alt and click on this mask area hide this dollar sign there we go throw everything in a smart object and duplicate the same layer styles as we had on the cards and change its direction of course the inner shadow here should be on the other side of course some perspective for shortening like this on our selected buttons things get a little bit complicated and you know what let's try creating it with shapes let's call this one main button icon let's start tracing your element like so give it some transformation we have this cone here so let's just create the same shape like so let's create a shape for the cutout of the door window and this one of course as well first make it all the appropriate color let's go with white and this tint of purple some hand painted moments so brush strokes to represent where the shadow is gonna fall on our hat we can change parameters of the brush a little bit erase some of the elements that we don't need here on the base we can give it some shadow as well for this one we need to have a little bit of wall depth here so inner shadow strong inner shadow inner shadow is gonna be brighter now let's give the same effect to the other elements let's align their angles and here on top it should be opposite direction like so maybe a little inner shadow brighter color almost white very short distance to give it this rounded feather corners cool now let's give this cone here the same shadow that we had on the house and let's erase on this other side maybe we can have a little more shadow where these two areas meet and of course on this cone as well some ambient shadow it's too blue so let's just reduce the saturation on this little shadow here we can do some kind of decorative lines to make it more interesting let's create an ellipse straw color increase the size and create clipping mask around this base shape now you can just play a little bit with the shapes and with colors and with whatnot 
this looks like an interesting shape to me okay what we need to do now is to create a shadow with the ellipse tool fill it with darker color let's make it a little bit smaller and rasterize it we want to add this blur effect on this far side of this ellipse now let's have some mask on it cool now let's have another shadow just a rasterized brush stroke now our house needs also some kind of darker treatment on this bottom part let's have this area here darker as well so mask some of it it looks quite nice but we are not done yet now let's create a smart object of this house we're gonna deal with this annoying bit of inner shadow just create a mask like so now what we need to create is this pattern on this house so i just create a layer select a particular area that i want to fill with this pattern and just fill it make it bigger clip it to this house drop the opacity down and of course have some overlay on it and you want to make this house a little more holographic so just go into this color overlay give it very bright tint color and drop its opacity make it overlay as well let's add some glowing effect create a selection on a new layer and give it few white brush strokes and just hit it a few times here and there expand it like so to the side so that it suits our perspective maybe we can do another one something like this let's see if the color can be better yes actually this one looks a little better let's see if maybe not overlay but something else will do a better job screen looks good let's change the color to this middle area and now it looks like a real hologram nice i like it so this is our navigation panel finally we did it Whew. if you learned something from this video please let me know in the comment section below don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel if this is the first video you see on the channel go check this other video as well